A new year is upon us, and we're starting it out with this January horror film. So it begins. <laughs> so Night Swim's a horror film starring Wyatt Russell and Carrie Condon. They buy a new house with them and their two kids. Caveat that they find out later, the pool is haunted by an entity. Scary, creepy shenanigans ensue. Funny enough, after the first pool kill, and the movie started going and it was, you know, Boring. I was thinking, all right, that first pool kill scene would have been a fine short film. I would find out a little later, turns out it was. This is based off of a short film from 2014, which taking a short film and drawing it out to feature length, we've seen that work before. Night Swim, on the other hand, Positives first. Let's let's be sweet before we're sour. Uh, there was an underwater shot or two near the end in particular that I thought was interesting. <laughs> Sounds like I'm really scraping and trying to find compliments for this movie, but there was a shot, one in particular near the end, where I was like, well, that's the most interesting thing that's happened in this movie. Almost feels like one of those scenarios where, you know, we've all done it, you're talking with your friends, like, oh, that'd be really cool in a movie this happens. Just spitballing for horror movie moments and shots, and they came up with this one moment, this one shot for a movie, a horror movie that takes place underwater, then the true tragedy and weight of the fact that you have to build an engaging movie around that shot. That's one of the problems this movie runs into. It has to put people in these dangerous situations, but make it feel natural. It never feels natural. There's a scene where this girl's playing Marco Polo with her boyfriend at night, so you know. Something's happening. She has her eyes closed, she's saying Marco, he's saying Polo, and then the creepy things start happening and she starts actually getting freaked out. But they have to keep her in this scary situation. Which means she can't open her eyes. So she just kind of doesn't. She's like, We're, stop it. Stop messing around, you're freaking me out. I was just like, then open your fucking eyes. Open your eyes and get out of the pool. This ends right now. Or you can keep them closed because we got to... Pad that runtime. This movie largely feels like runtime padding. That's one of the dangers when you have an interesting premise that works for a short film that you wanna stretch out to feature length film. You gotta make it work and feel organic. This feels like a short film premise that works as a short film. And about an hour and 15 minutes of other shit. I appreciate that this movie is only 90 minutes. That said, it's still felt like two full hours. They did it right in making it only 90 minutes and it all feels for naught. That Marco Polo scene is just one of the many scenarios characters just make dumbass decisions. And that all boils down to the writing. The script, it's bad. I will say there were a couple of actors in the movie that I felt made the most of it. There's their characters in the movie. There's a pool technician guy and a real estate agent. I really feel like the actors who played those two characters were like, are you fucking serious with this script? Okay. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna deliver these lines in a way that showcases some of my comedic timing. I'm getting something out of this. Good on them, they brought some levity to a film that was largely a bore. That said, it felt like they were in a completely different movie. I named them because they stood out more. All the actors in the movie, you can tell, are trying. There's only so much an actor can do with the script, but sometimes it's just blatantly obvious that it's not on the actors. I mean, shit, Wyatt Russell and Kerry Condon, we've seen them be great, so there is that data. But yeah, in large part, this movie felt like a Frankenstitch of a few other horror movies, but it's in a pool this time. Funny enough, I do see potential in the lore. I say potential because the reality of the situation in this movie is that it's shoddy as fuck. But the potential's there for a possible sequel. You get some better writers on the script for a sequel. It could be that Annabelle situation where the first movie was ass, but the sequel is actually pretty enjoyable. Though the lore is inconsistent as shit. Like, why the thing kill the cat? I mean, the cat dies in the trailer, so it's a spoiler, but not a spoiler, but it's something you should probably know, especially if you're a cat person. But in terms of what this entity is, what it wants, and why, I left the theater like, wait a minute, why'd it kill the cat? There's no actual reason for it to do that other than the fact that this movie's borrowing from a lot of other horror movies, and well, in other horror movies, the family pet dies. So I guess we'll steal that one too, even though it doesn't make sense. If it just had better momentum, it might have been able to be that fun, cheesy bad movie that you can laugh at with friends at a Halloween party. As it stands, this is the movie you put on during the Halloween horror movie binge when you're ready to call it and you want the party to wind down. Well, we're starting 2024 off right, so to speak. Watch the short on YouTube, save yourself about an hour and 25 minutes. All right, so Night Swim, have you seen it? What did you think about it, if you're gonna see it? Or what's a surprisingly enjoyable January horror film for you? Whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.